Vulcan Deckmasters Week 2, Day 3, casting with me is going to be Kriparian. First hey time guys. we cast together, man. Yeah, first time tuning in on the tournament. Uh, looking pretty good. Uh, we got some pretty sweet matches for you guys today. Yeah, we're looking at like, uh, we were supposed to cast five matches total, but apparently Kalento, uh, this match versus Stilo is going to have to be rescheduled. So we're going to have four matches today. So again, I just want to remind you of what the format is for those who may not be familiar. We're currently in the group stage stage of the tournament. We're going to have the playoffs much later towards the end. It's a round robin, so we have four groups, A, B, C, D. Each of them contains five players, and they're all going to play against each other player in their group. Uh, so the top three of each group is going to move on to the playoffs. So 12 players total will move on, and that'll be basically the, you know, grand finalists among yep. them. And uh, because there's so many games, because there's so much stuff going on, um, some players have played uh, several more games than others. And, uh, you know, as in this stage of the tournament, we're kind of covering the players we haven't seen too much of yet. Uh, fortunately, we got some pretty cool names for you guys. Uh, we're going to kick off with uh, Life Coach versus Cypher here in, uh, in a few moments. Yeah, Life Coach versus Cypher. Actually, Life Coach wasn't supposed to be in the league, but then Tides of Time dropped out and Life Coach replaced mm -hmm. him. Um, Cypher played last week. Uh, and unfortunately for him, had a pretty rough series of games against, uh, I forget who exactly he was playing against, but he got, he was playing Druid and couldn't nail the win at the very end, uh, which was a bit unfortunate because I think Surrender in his group right now is 4-0. So he's just yeah. completely wrecked. I think that was against Surrender, actually. Surrender is just completely demolishing in his it's, group B. It's kind of a good thing, though, like when, um, when you have a group of five and top three go through, having one player completely dominate doesn't really make it too bad it's kind of when like two players do really well and that's not exactly the case both life coach and cypher are zero one in the tournament so far with uh their loss you know going from their surrender match yeah so. and i mean show is not doing that amazing either he's in the same group and he's one two i believe so that's not really uh yeah. guaranteeing that he's going to get to the top so everyone who's left in the group w alongside surrender still has a chance to get up top i think that's right uh, depending on whether or not uh, they win their next matches It'll be a bit and, uh, difficult, though. If you guys haven't tuned in, uh, I believe the format is um, it's best of three. So they bring uh, they bring three decks. One gets banned, and uh, it's basically first player to win with both of their remaining decks gets that yeah. point on the board. And a conquest format that's really fast. Yeah, it is. It is pretty fast. Um, best of uh, best of threes are traditionally not regarded as like the most accurate display of skill, but. With so many matches between the players with the round robin and groups of five players, I mean, you kind of get a pretty good idea uh, about who should go on through. So it's, uh, it's a pretty good system. It's a pretty interesting one where you see a lot of variety of players throughout the tournament. Yeah, I'm actually curious to know, though, how it was going to go today because Life Coach didn't seem to be on his... Uh you know, a game last time he played, or rather, I think mm. he just got really like sickeningly top deck by, um, by surrender, and he's st he seemed tilted. He's gonna recover from that pretty fast. I don't think he'll bring the tilt over today. And they got a pretty good win. I mean, in the Archon team league, um, Nihilum over Archon, I think is six to five. So that was a pretty good series of matches for them. So at least uh, he might have recovered from that last, yeah, last recovered, time. Yeah, yeah, he's been doing okay in the last few days. I actually got a chance to cast most of his uh, last few matches overall and uh they have been pretty good top level play um i don't know i actually haven't really seen anything but that from life coach i mean sometimes the cards don't go your way and there's really nothing you can do um i, I didn't get a chance to catch his match against surrender was he was he kind of you know playing a bit off you think no not even so picture picture a, a lineup that includes paladin and druid both like, like the, the Paladin is super heal-heavy to counter Hunter, and the Druid contains a Kazan Mystic and a Healing Touch, and I think some other healing cards, to counter okay. Hunter. And then he runs against Hunter, and the Hunter just demolishes him with, you know, Huffer, obviously. So, Life Coach was really tilted oh, during wow, those I games. See. It was pretty crazy. <clears throat> yeah. So, the, uh, the Face Hunter has been, uh, has been ruling this, this group so far? Uh, well, uh, Midrange Hunter's been doing way too well. Like, it's actually to the point where I feel like somebody's got to do something about it. And Life Coach seemed to be prepared, but it didn't quite line up. Like, the draws didn't work, and he got Iron Beak Owled on the Belcher. So everything just didn't quite work out. Uh, but we'll see if he actually techs against Cypher. Cypher's a player who still, um, you know, he, he favors Freeze Mage a lot. So I don't know how much Life Coach will prepare against that. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. There's, I mean, there's only so much that you can prepare. Um 
And uh, I'm curious, they have to uh, they have to stick with their decks throughout the group stage, I'd imagine, right? So no, actually, they can switch their decks uh, every every single day. Yeah, as far as I've seen so far, like the okay, the decks don't okay. transfer, so it's actually allowing them to adapt. They get information. So it is, it is like a can... fresh start. I see. Right. I see. Well, um, I feel that may favor uh, people who have their matches uh, kind of prolonged uh, because they get to like constantly adjust. Um, I mean, that, that kind of just goes to show how impressive it is to be 4-0 at the top of your group if you're Surrender right now, because, uh, you know, you, you're just kind of out of it. You don't have to deal with anything. But that's, yeah, it's, that's, just, it's done. That's really, really hard to do, because you, I mean, you just don't really get to see what your opponents bring um, to this tournament in this format. Because this, this format is fairly unique. Um, most, most tournaments run... Um, fewer matchups, but with longer matches in between, so you have to deal with more things. And uh, here, it's kind of like you know, it's an all-in type of match, but there's a lot of different one of like different series of them. So it's I don't know, I don't I don't really know how to gauge this exactly, um, but well, it does it does seem like you know players who can come back and switch their decks are going to just come up with a fair score overall because they can make adjustments over time. So I think I think that's an advantage. Yeah, well, it's just like it reminds me of the Kingwin Pro League a little bit, um, except it's accelerated, like really accelerated by narrowing down to three. You know, best of threes, it's already very quick. And when you get a ban, it's allowing you to really target specific archetypes. Mm. Like you're not gonna get taken aback by a deck you didn't want to see. You, if you build a lineup that's gonna be strong, except against you know that one class, you can just ban it. So it's really allowing people to play whatever they want. And yeah. I, I feel like. I don't know how strong it is to use the tactic of, you know, bring two similar decks in the best of three like this, where one of your decks can get banned. Uh, seems like it's a little less uh, consistent, perhaps, than in other Conquest formats. Mm -hmm. Well, most Conquest formats just bring, you know, the, the decks that you're really familiar with. I mean, uh, I believe uh, to, to this set, Life Coach brought Warrior, Druid, Warlock, which, from my understanding, is basically all he plays. Yeah, on. Paladin as well, but... Let's just say it hasn't really been in his lineup recently. He brought it against the Hunter expectation he had from Surrender. But mm -hmm. I know Cypher plays, well actually we see it now, Cypher plays Freeze Mage. And uh, we can see here that Life Coach with his Druid actually picked up Kazan Mystic. Oh man. Yeah. Um, the players, uh, so Life Coach is playing Warrior, Druid, Warlock with his Warrior Band. So he's playing right. Druid and Warlock. And Cypher is playing Warrior, Mage, Rogue with his Rogue Band. So it's... Life Coach's Druid Warlock versus Cypher's Warrior Mage. Four different classes should be interesting. I like it. If Life Coach brought Handlock and Cypher's playing Patron Warrior, I think this Kazan Mystic tech to Druid plus the, uh, the Handlock should be able to carry Life Coach. Is Cypher holding a pen? He might be. Go figure that out. I guess he oh. writes information. It's like uh, old school note taking. What is Notepad? Yeah. On his notebook. Yeah, exactly. That's something you write on, guys. <laughs> Did you know that in 2015? Yeah. Supposed to have notebooks. Oh, close game. Never mind. Okay. So let's let's take a look at the situation. It's Freeze Mage versus Kazan Mystic. That alone is like really bad. Uh, against the Druid is is pretty bad as well, I'd imagine. Yeah, I don't know what's happening with the client there. Getting a bit confused. I'm not too sure, but we can um, we can just see uh, one perspective. We can make sense of everything with that. Yeah. So my question here is: Do you ever innervate Keeper to steal a secret next turn with Kazan Mystic, or um, is that, or do you no. risk the run of, uh, the, do you run the risk, sorry, of uh, smashing yourself into a tempo mage that actually plays a counter spell and then it does not? See, I think I think it's kind of a situation where if you steal an ice barrier, the mage will just never trigger it. So you, so you kind of wait you have Kazan. to steal the ice block, basically. Yeah. Like, if you don't steal the ice block, it just doesn't do you any good. And it's I feel it's such a waste. Alright, so... I mean, that's a pretty weird situation, because there's really nothing you want to just go all out with your innervates and coin. At this yeah, point. if anything, you're going to want to innervate that keeper. So, I think here what you can... Mm. Good no, sounds you have to, no, you have to play something. Yeah, you have to play something. So, maybe... Maybe oh. you just hero power. <laughs> I guess you don't have to play anything. <laughs> yeah, I guess Life Coach decides that it's not relevant. Could keep the Innervate. I mean, I kind of get it, because turn three, he just coins out the Keeper and doesn't waste the Innervate. And he's actually going to be able to get a better deal out of that. 
Yeah, I think it's much more important to uh, silence this card draw. I mean, that that guy getting a secret is not really that relevant, but the Acolyte might draw three, which is kind of a big problem here. Mm -hmm. We got well, Life Coach in, in, in game mode. Oh, man. The la laser vision towards his cards there. Yeah, it actually scares me when he gets so hyper-focused. <laughs> like, I wonder how focused he is and whether or not sometimes, you know, when I see him tilt, it's because he's excessively focused. Because I never do see him tilt. Very often he's just kind of laid back and he takes the, the RNG. But when he's hyper-focused, like he was last time against Surrender, uh, when the yeah. RNG came and the Iron Bikyal was stopped, like, Life Coach's reaction was just over the top. Something I never see from him, just laying back in his chair and flipping tables. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean, you, you prepare so long, and, um, you know, probably one out of three games are, like, completely out of your control. Yeah. So he's going to prefer to wrath this instead of uh, using the Keeper. I guess it's actually giving him the ability to silence off the Mad Scientist afterwards. Uh, or do you I keep think the Keeper for the Doomsayer? It's yeah, that might be an idea. Also, I think he's just also trying to conserve his mana acceleration. Yeah, that's uh, that's the, the advantage of not wasting the coin for the sounds here. Yeah. Plus, if... anyway, you give your keeper away if you do that, because he's got you know three damage on board plus the ping, mm -hmm. so you would lose it. I wonder. Yeah, but that's okay. Yeah. It's no a big deal. Minor consideration. Generally, uh, in this in this matchup, it, it kind of uh, it kind of sucks to go second and not have acceleration. So I think that's really what Life Coach is struggling with. Even though this seemed like a good situation, I mean that Kazan Mystic can only go so far. Yeah, you still have to take away the twenty nine health in the first place. Yeah. Like I, Cipher's Emperor Thorson. He, after he plays Arcane Intellect like next turn, he's gonna have drawn you know one from Loot Hoarder, two from Arcane, plus one from the regular card draw. Um, and another one of the following turn. That's going to be pretty insane with those zero mana ice lances. Once he gets the wombo mm. combo, I think I like the um, the coin hero power uh, shade play. I think it's probably the most consistent that I can find. Well, he's going to go for Drew to the Claw with the taunt. All right, so he's going to try to force away a fireball. Well, oh, so, I think just the idea is um, a shade is is quite vulnerable to just die to a, a board clear at any other turn except this one. But if you play it on this turn, it survives Blizzard next turn, and then it gets the girl uh, out of control, and you have right. the silence for the Doomsayer. Uh, it wouldn't beat Flamestrike, though. Not even by the time it comes out, that's right. It'd be no, like, exactly be dead. Exactly dead, yeah. So, okay. Turns out better for him. Oh, <laughs> wow. Blizzard. That's not bad. Okay. Well, he has no secrets in hand, so he has no reason to trade there. Often, if you if you draw a lot of secrets, it's it's kind of scary not to get any value out of the scientist. But uh, you know, you have all the time in the world with that hand. Does life coach ever finally decide to silence? No, I think I think he's already made the decision to save it uh, to play against the doomsayer. So he's just gonna go for card draw probably and kill the. Blood Mage? Because, I mean, you can't let that Blood Mage live. At the same time, it feels like a waste to use your 4 damage on it. Like a complete waste. Well, then you can do the um, the Hero Power into the 1-1, one, one, drop the Shade, and go face. Yeah, that's the slowest play again, keeping the mana acceleration for when he's going to need it. I think you could argue that he kind of needed to do it this turn, though. Like, the Innervate doesn't really do much anymore. Um... It's a pretty good thing to keep, I guess, if you're going to go for the Wombo combo later on. Since you expect the game to drag on unless the mage has like the perfect cards. But now Emperor Thorsten is going to give Cypher a 9-mana Pyro, 1-mana Frostbolt, and 2-0-mana Ice Lances. That's basically... I mean, that that's a huge amount of burst, just with Emperor. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually pretty insane. So what is that? That's 10 plus 11. That's 21. Yeah, 21 damage right off the hand, so... Like, that doesn't even account for any fireballs that have come up so far. Like, Yeah, but he, he has to kind of set that up is, is the problem. So do you go for the Blizzard play instead? Yeah, I think so. I think you do, actually. Because, uh, like, the, the game the mage is playing is not, I'm going to kill my opponent right now, I'm going to combo, like, right away. If it's not a complete combo, it doesn't actually accomplish that much. 
Yeah, I can see that. I can see why you wouldn't Blizzard here. But just to get the value right now and maybe get the earlier kill. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I feel like Blizzard's good just because now he might trade away his board into your Emperor and suddenly the value of it goes down. Whoa, that's, that's a, a good crazy card. good card against Freeze Mage. You well, can't play it though right now. Yeah, I don't think it's worth it with the Innervate. So you kind of want to hero power, so... If you hero power, mm, you, you can't. You can just YOLO Kazan. If you, if you can steal the ice block, no, nah, I, I think you want to play Kazan like to deny him staying alive. Like, yeah, you, just usually at the very end, right? You yeah, you're usually, about to one shot him. Usually, the mage relies on ice block giving him an extra turn to finish the game, and if you can steal that turn, you often trade a, a loss for a win. Um, where here it's just a bit reckless. It's just mana wise, you don't have anything very good to play. So, is there an argument to just play Keeper of the Grove and trade the shade away into Emperor and then go phase for four? Mm, looks like that's what he's doing. Wow, no spectator bug off of the shoes one. What the hell is happening? Oh man, we're Production's transcending. On point. <laughs> nice job with that spectator mode fix. God, so Flame Strike's probably just gonna come down here. He's already gotten the Ooh, value he wanted. Drawn an ice block. That may be a decent thing, because if you get the other off your mad scientist, uh, and if Life Coach goes for an early Kazan. Though I I, I kinda doubt he will though. I think yeah, he'll Life just Coach is, barrier first. Yeah, he Life Coach is in it for the long run. He's investing in all of his options right now. Yeah, the fact that he kept his innervate for so long really means he wants to play the longer game. Mm-hmm. So is he just going to opt for Blizzard oh, instead? If, yeah, if he's oh yeah, Blizzard, my Acolyte Opinion straight. is not bad. Mm -hmm. I don't dislike that actually. It's going to maybe get him a better mm. Flame Strike afterwards. He might be thinking of just playing the Ice Block first, but... To get Ice you, Barrier? Yeah, yeah, if you do that, like you kind of have to um, just spend your, the rest of your turn doing like nothing. Yeah, it's a bit like, a bit of an all-in, but at the same time... Oh wow, actually... Polymorph! Oh my god. Yeah, I am liking this. Has he faced too many Ragnaros or what? I guess. What is this? Alright, so... I mean, he's picked up a Fireball. So between Fireball and the next turn, Pyro, I like Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Ice Lance, it, he's not that far off from getting the kill. Mm-hmm. He just needs to pick up, like, one more Fireball or another Frostbolt. And then I, dodge a Lothab. I kind of like the Rag play, actually. It's very high pressure. Yeah. Like, what's the mage gonna do against it, really? It's kind of a wasted innervate, but it's it's so strong. Like, rag works like almost a hundred percent of the time. It's just not this time. <laughs> yeah, like every single time you see this moment, you're like, I could not be efficient by one mana. It's not gonna punish me too much. Except, yeah. I guess in this position, it's a little different. The reason Ragnaros is so strong is, um, yeah, he, he, he just goes for it. It's it's just uh, mages don't traditionally uh, run Big Game Hunter or Polymorph, so to kill Ragnaros, they have to expel quite a lot of damage they would otherwise need to kill you. And Life Coach is probably thinking with Ice Block on his side of the board, guaranteed with Kazan Mystic, that, uh, you know, that damage loss from the mage is just going to result in a win. And just unfortunately for him, like, not only is Oh, mage, wow, Life Coach. He's gonna be facing off a second ice block unless he gets the kill right away. Uh oh. Um, yeah, unless unless the mage uh, has polymorph, like he needs polymorph in the deck to begin with, and then he needs to draw it to handle Ragnaros. Yeah, that's what life coach is probably not expecting. I mean, the the polymorph is gonna yeah. fall down, but Cipher here seeing the Alex draws is probably just gonna try to delay his own death, which should be very easy to do. And then he Alexes the opponent. And then again, life coach with Kazan Mystic. And if he sets it up properly, it's a lot of health to take away, though. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. Mm. A lot out of health. I think I like the draw option here. Yeah, with the Ancient of Lore. I think it's going to maybe get him the Force of Nature to get a second wave of burst if necessary. Because like, mm -hmm. if he plays the Ancient of Lore and Cypher goes for Alex and Kazan Mystic, Savage War falls down, li like Life Coach wins right away. So it depends yeah. on how Cypher ends up playing the next turn. 
Actually, no, I think it just depends on how Life Coach is going to play it out. Uh, because as it stands, it seems like Life Coach won't be able to steal the block and kill him. Because hmm. he has yeah. three, which is 15. Oh, with Ancient um, of Lore, I think he can pull have... it off, right? Yeah. Oh, he'll have Savage Roar and Swipe, that's right. Yeah, yeah. he'll have it. Okay, no, no it's, it's true. If, if he just plays a creature that sticks and Cypher doesn't go for a clear, uh, Life Coach will get the surprise kill. Unless, like, Cypher can actually afford to play it very slowly, is the thing. From his perspective. Because he doesn't have to Alex now, like, what if Kazan Mystic? Like, he's seen Life Coach play that last week against Surrender. Oh, no, you, you, you couldn't do that, because you have to play, you have to play Kazan. Savage Roar is, is not enough, is it? Oh my god, that's it. Is that enough? I'm pretty sure it is. 4 plus Savage Roar, he's got 3, 4, 5, 6, plus another 8. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Game. That's exactly it. So Cypher not going for the board clear is a little impatient with wow. the Alex Fossa. I expected him to clear and take his time since he really didn't have to rush. I mean, what were the odds of not being able to kill your opponent after you flame strike? Right? Like, if you, if you just played that, I think he would have been fine. But, oh man, Cypher is going to hate himself for that move as soon as he realizes he could have taken it a bit slower. Ugh. Those I mean plays. that that was that was very interesting. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, life coach just you know trying to set up the perfect situation. He like just got it. Um, it did seem a bit vulnerable to the board clear, but I mean, I was just we were looking at C Cipher's hand. It, it just seemed like such an obvious Alistraza, right? Like if if you Alistraza your opponent, you put him on seventeen. He has to like ancient of lore and kill Alistraza. <laughs> Yeah, that's what you're looking at when you you look at no, like Cypher's of, position. It's like yeah, the ancient of lore and hero power, didn't he? Oh, no, he's at 17, seventeen. That's seventeen. Yeah, he wouldn't even be able to damage. get out of it. Twenty-one damage would have been like the most unlikely yeah. outcome. And the thing is, like Cipher could have decided to just you know wipe the board and do the Alex on the following turn. And I don't think Life Coach would have been able to pop the block then. Mm -hmm. Well, now we have uh, Life Coach's handlock versus uh, the same freeze mage that Cipher was playing. Um, Pretty good matchup there, I think, for the uh, Freeze Mage player. Yeah, it, I think it's traditionally pretty good, uh, but we know that Life Coach, I think, runs like all the required defenses, like all the heals, all the silences. Um, and, well, I guess the Polymorph kind of helps the Mage again as well. Let the pain hmm. speak yeah. To me. I mean, Cypher already picks up Alex. For all that might be worth. But the thing is, if he just gets a good Emperor Thorson, and he already has it, like all it takes is one turn of phase damage. Yeah. So, like if he gets the same setup as last game with the Pyroblast and the double Ice Lance, I mean, it's unlikely to ever occur, but with a double Acolyte, I mean, he could always draw into a pretty good amount of burst. Possibilities. Mm, I could just probably thinking of silencing that Acolyte. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think it's. I mean, it's not mandatory. By far, it's just kind of a really dangerous minion to let the mage draw with, especially since it's already one of your weaker matchups. Nope. Doesn't do it. Yeah, I was gonna give the mage a lot of draws with uh, Emperor Tharson, that might be a really bad thing. Actually, you know, the more now that I think of it, like how favored really is Freeze Mage versus Handlock? Like, I know Echo Mage is awful against Handlock. It's miserable. I think it's pretty good because both players play the game, like, quite slowly, so the Mage gets a chance to draw. Once you get a chance to draw, like, yeah, again, Emperor Tharson lets you just have a crazy turn that you can't even heal from. Um, I, I, okay, so, like, Freeze Mage versus, like, any Paladin deck is a joke because yeah. the Paladin <laughs> takes forever to, like, do anything. Yeah, right. So it's kind of like that, I feel. Well, where the Warlock just takes a really long time to do anything. And it just gives so many options to the Freeze Mage. Oh, man. Like this... Cypher with the double Acolyte opener and Life Coach without any Hellfires... That is not at all what he wants to be. I mean, how do you even deal with this? Well, with two Acolytes... I think you can consider just uh, letting them stay there. You might get some overdraw options. It's not really the type of deck that traditionally gets them, but maybe. Yeah, might happen. 
Like, you, do you ever could you live tap and then Iron Beak one of them, or is that all, not even worth it at that point? I mean, all his plays are weak, so yeah. You know, Watcher with taunting actually makes a bit of sense because he's not gonna be able to get too much done, and you don't really need those Sun Furies against the uh, Mage. You can might as well throw them out mm -hmm. whenever you get the chance. Oh wow. Well, now he has the Mad Scientist. Um, he has a few damage pieces. Really, Cypher is just in the game of trying to draw more cards right now. Yeah, and if you Mad, wait, Mad you Scientist might get kind, of, kind of accomplishes that. Like, having one less secret in the deck is one less secret you're going to draw. Because you, re you really just want to draw those damage spells when you slam down Emperor next turn. So I, I, think, um, I think Mad Scientist and Pignan and Acolyte is, is a good play here. Yeah, just like get as much draw as you possibly can at this point. Yeah. Well, if you do that, do. no, hold on. We have, we have to think of like block. some overdraw options. Would you be worried about overdrawing though? I mean, how much would you be worried about it? Like, you almost don't care since you've got Emperor Thorsten and Alex already ready. So those are kind of your two most important mm -hmm. cards to OTK the Warlock. Well, with with a Hellfire, uh, you will get milled here because the two three will attack the Acolyte and then Hellfire will come down. So yeah, you'll be on ten. Three card draws. You're at seven, and then you draw yours for the turn. Yeah, you have to assume he doesn't have it though, because he probably would have done that instead of uh, Watcher and Sun Fury. Mm -hmm. I guess he can get a Coil and taunt up both of them again and kill the second Acolyte. Yeah, that seems pretty good. I don't see a play that's much better. Yeah, I mean the Drake could be developed now. And then you could kill the mad scientist and coil one of the acolytes. That's like the other play. Yeah, playing playing the Drake lets you lets you kill a emperor next turn pretty easily. But mm -hmm. I mean, your opponent's basically gonna have nine cards, and if he has an emperor, are you really in this game at all? It's pretty crazy that Cypher's two games he did have the Emperor. He couldn't do much with it in the first game though. Like, he went super aggressive with the uh, late game plays. Well, C Cypher was really close to winning. It was just that right. um, it was just that the, the, the Kazan Mystic plus Burst is not something you can play around. All right, so Cypher picks up the Ice Block. Nope, the Ice Barrier. Well, Life Coach is tapping very aggressively. It makes me wonder if he has maybe Kazan Mystic in this deck as well. I wouldn't be surprised since he has to pin Cypher on playing Freeze Mage since he's played it just about every time. But Cypher just picked up a Frostbolt to go with one of the Ice Lances and the double Fireball. That's a lot of burst. Mm -hmm. Just getting the max number of cards here. Yeah. Definitely going to be dropping the uh, Emperor if he does that. Yeah, that's so much damage. That's uh, 6, 6, and 7. That's 19. And that's 7 mana. 19 damage. That's absolutely insane. Yeah, but at least there's a 2 heal boss for life goer. So if he does get Alex draws it... I mean, the thing is he just can't tap too low. Because <laughs> that's when things get a bit... Uh, a bit weird. Do you ever just... The you thing have is, to, like, you have to kill this. Do you just play Dr. Boom and double trade? I'm not sure. Probably. But, I mean, you have to think about it this way, right? Like, Cypher's got 19 damage on 7 mana. If he draws just throughout the game, if he draws the other Frostbolt and light Ice Lance... Yeah, that's over. Yeah, it's yeah. 26, right? Like, you yeah. just can't heal bot around that amount of damage. Okay, it looks like he's going to go for the mill. And, uh-oh, that's actually one of the cards Cypher wanted to see. Picks up one of the Ice Lances. It's like, not I guess lethal, the, though, because yeah. he, he <laughs> doesn't, have, and it doesn't have enough mana. Yeah. One more turn. But, like, how does Life Coach win this? It's, it's kind of like, you know, that, that Paladin parallel where, you know, Life Coach might seem like he's doing okay. He's got, like, the heals and stuff. But uh, he's, like, several turns away from winning the game. And he and doesn't have many turns at all. Yeah. The opponent's too close to winning. Do you Archmage and then Ice Lance? That is the question I have to ask. I know it's no. it's a bit silly because it doesn't really achieve anything. So just Blizzard Doomsayer? Yeah, I like Blizzard Doomsayer. Turn 8, Alex. Life Coach can't play double Healbot and then you... Wait, what do you mean? No. 
No, next turn he's dead. He doesn't need to Alex. It's 23 damage in hand. The life coach could like could play the heal bot, right? Why would he? He's 22. You wouldn't play a heal bot. Okay. I guess I wouldn't. <laughs> I don't know. Whenever I'm at 22, I guess a freeze mage, I'm always worried about my health total. Yeah, so but I guess like, you won't expect you're playing, the Alex you're for like a heal early bot. than 10. Yeah. You're playing a heal bot? I don't know. Like, you, you have to silence and then heal bot. Okay, I guess there's a chance. I guess life coach could do it. I just don't think it's realistic. Going for ice block. Ice block blizzard. Okay. Because you know, you can never be safe enough. What if life coach gets the ice block though? That's gonna be pretty much the god draw of the Kazan Mystic if he picks one up. Is it really? Like. I mean, if you would get ice blocked, then the OTK doesn't work nearly as well, and you can then double antique. That'd be crazy. That'd be so insane. That would be. That would be like really the only way to get out of this, though. So many. So right now, life coach is dead. He has the heal bot to not <laughs> die. <laughs> life coach is dead. Alex yes. Chosa was not played, and he doesn't know what's coming. Now it all depends on whether or not he assumes his opponent's got a pretty dry hand or not. I mean, he's played Emperor. So he must have been content with the cards he had to Emperor. Mm -hmm. Like that, maybe that's Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's some, you're right. There's some argument to realize that you're like in really bad shape. But also like if you keep playing not to lose, you're just not going to win. Because like it's, it's just a, such a slow deck already. Yeah. Like, like he's, yeah, he's playing Dr. Boom here. He's going to lose I, the I game. I agree, I agree. But <laughs> yeah, I, this is the correct play. This is the, you know, if, if he has it, it's like almost no chance of winning anyway. And if he if he doesn't have it, I need to win the game sooner rather than later. And, I feel like uh, I'm looking at that old aggro mage deck from you know twenty thousand years ago. Yeah, well, not quite. <laughs> and life is <laughs> like, are you serious? <laughs> does he really have those six exact cards? Is that five does. cards or six? I don't even know. Not there even mad. Life coach. Not even possible. caring. Ice Double ice ice five yeah, it's five so cards. Five cards and four had to be hit by Emperor. Right. So that's that's quite a task, but I mean, sometimes it happens, and when it does, uh, in an unfavorable matchup, there's really not much hope to be had. Um, again, life coach, he he could have played better if he knew exactly what his opponent had, yep, but yeah. in in his own situation, I don't think anyone can really argue with his line of play. I think he was absolutely perfect, and um, yeah, sometimes just can't do anything. Um, it's often a situation that you know people don't really realize. Uh, you know, in the at the end, you have to win. So you know, yeah, you, have, you, you have you have to play not to lose. Basically. Yeah, if you if you work. play not to lose, you need to be kind of like already winning. And life coach was not already winning. So yeah, his line of play seemed very good to me. So Just, that's so. I guess sometimes. it's like the the the, the, the contrast but between the last game that uh, Cipher played, where he could have played not to lose because he had the Alex for the win either way. Kind of. Like the first game. He could have played not to if, get obliterated by a tech. Like, that's like the only yeah. way. Yeah. But, like, it, even if he did, like, the the board clear thing, he still could have lost. Right. Like, it wasn't impossible for Life Coach to pop the block, but he, like, to remove the block and pop him for 14. But it'd yeah. been a bit more difficult, maybe. Anyway, yeah. Life Coach is going to be going up with his handlock against uh, the Warrior from Cypher. Again, you know, if we assume Patron, then handlock is hugely favored in that matchup. Unless you think everything so? lines up. I, yeah, I, I, massively. I think it's. Um... I think it's favored, like you mentioned, but I don't think it's it's that huge. I think it's one of those like, you know, maybe fifty five. Oh really, man? I'd go like seventy five for the handlock. Really? Yeah, the lack of executes. Like you have I'd, only two, unless you tech. Uh... I'd push it maybe to like sixty because it's life coach playing it. <laughs> wow, and, that's and if, uh, really. If life, if life coach has played anything, he's played handlock versus grim patron warrior. Yeah, like, probably enough times more yeah. than anybody probably. So, yeah, the, the experience, I think, may weigh it a little bit more than normal, but uh, 75, I don't know about that. We'll yeah, that, that's my own experience with it. Like, unless everything lines up and I get a god draw with, pa with the Emperor Thorson as a patron warrior, like, against a handlock, it's usually an uphill battle, like, all the way through. Mm -hmm. But then again, maybe he'll pull off a crazy frothing, that'll be the end of that. Yep. Yeah. That tends to be the way the matchup is won anyway. Because the patrons are pretty much, I wouldn't say irrelevant, but they don't tend to do very much. Like, unless you have the double yeah. whirlwind in a rage. That's right. They, 
Don't go face. You have the patience for like just the wild combos, but mostly to counter the zoo and aggressive decks. Mm -hmm. While the frothing tends to have just surprise kills. I mean, we've we've all seen the highlights out there on YouTube where you know this one guy has like two taunts on the board, thirty life and like thirty armor. Thirty and then armor he dies <laughs> and <they> die. <laughs> from no That's, board. Yeah. yeah. So we nerfed Miracle Row because we didn't think it was super interactive. So here's a Grim Patron. I hope you guys enjoy this new card. <laughs> Like the only, like I guess yeah. that and Emperor were the only two super impactful BRM cards, so I really don't care. Like I'm happy. I think, I think yeah, I think the opinions were pretty split on that. Um, I'm I'm actually in in the the side that I think these decks are just cool. Yeah, like, same. Yeah, the, the combo decks kind of are just interesting to play. They're just interesting as a whole. I didn't really mind the Rogue deck. It felt like the Rogue deck was a lot easier to play than the Grim Patron, even though the Grim Patron just seems to have. Um, a wider range of possibilities. Like, no rogue was going to kill a warrior with two taunts at 60 health. That was just not possible. Like, it yeah, didn't unless matter. it would take, it like, three take turns to set up. Like, they had to right. get a second stealth on the gadget sand and then keep drawing and drawing, and then the warrior had to whiff on everything, but... Yeah. Might be the highest damage combo deck we've ever seen in an actual constructed play, now that I think of it. Like, we've had a lot of combo decks. Um, including Freeze Mage, I mean, you could consider it, you know, a combo deck to an extent. Mm. It's never really been able to dish out that much damage. Yeah. Well, I think the uh, the highest combo was the original uh, combo warrior when Alastras oh, removed the yeah. armor as well. Yeah. So you just equip Gorhal and charge just to cost zero mana. So mm. you'd, you'd set up Gorhal and then Alastraza charge and Gorhal. Yeah. And three their, cards, three their cards. life is irrelevant. Okay. Yeah. All right, so All right, there's well, back, no back to the, the actual moment. game here. Right, um, we got sidetracked a little bit. So there's no execute in Cypher's hand at the moment, but he already picked up the Emperor. And again, I think you know that is probably the most impactful card he could ever have mm. um, in the Green Patron deck. It's the one card that really enables all this stupidity damage-wise that you know uh, Patron Warrior can pull off. Okay, what do you think? There's some argument to protect the Drake uh, so you can keep that. doing out damage. Uh, like you can play the Ancient Watcher and taunt just the Ancient Watcher. Well, the Watcher will still die, but I guess yeah, the Drake that's will okay. Live through it, because I mean you can kill the one four afterwards. Mm. Um, Thing is, like, if, if you're not doing that, what are you playing? Are you developing a Watcher that's going to be already in execute range? So tap Watcher trade into the Armorsmith. Yeah, like if you do that, you end the turn with an injured watcher. If you do the other, you end the turn with um, an injured Drake. Yeah, you could always silence off the injured watcher anyway to trade it away if necessary. So I, I kind of like that play better. Okay. Yeah. How how valuable do you think silence is against the warrior in this case? Honestly, it's only good when they they're whiffing. Like very often when they're whiffing on their draws. Um, mm -hmm. And they, oh, they can't just, enable like, the Acolyte right away. You're like, okay, let me just silence this. But that's not the case at all. In fact, Cypher has uh, the Whirlwind effect and the Cool Pass. So yeah. it's pretty crazy. It is pretty crazy, but he is uh, kind of burning some combo pieces here. Well, he has the War Song with the Emperor Thoris, and he just needs to pick up a Frothing or a Patron. And I think he's going to be pretty close to doing what he wants. And you know, that Acolyte will have netted a total of three cards, unless Life Coach decides to silence it right now. Mm, no, looks like he's just going with the Mortal Coil. Cypher picks up. So it is going to be a really good um, Emperor Tharsa then. Yeah, it's, it's insane. On, on seven cards. Yeah, it's actually amazing. Alright, so this is kind of the situation that I thought he'd get himself into. And it feels like that Ancient Watcher isn't really much. Like the injured one. Yeah, it's not doing much for you, and that's the thing, like, you need to find your taunters, ideally with Giants. Uh, like, you're happy that the Watcher might eat up and execute. Like, that's pretty much the net positive thing about it. The problem is you still mm -hmm. don't have your Giants, so even though that's a good thing, uh, it's still not solving the long-term problem of not having bigger taunts. Well, Cypher has uh, a lot of draws with his current hand. Um, mm -hmm. Life Coach is going to have to remove this Emperor here. The only way that I see that he can is with a Dark Bomb. So if he plays a Dark Bomb, he actually can't play much else. Actually, he can't really play anything else. Yeah, yeah I mean, you could 
tap and hope something else shows up. Um, or you could be GH for tempo, but again, two whirlwind effects will take care of that. So it's not really, it's not going to be worth much. Then, like, how many targets do you have for BGH? You've got Grom when it gets enraged and a frothing, but usually you're already dead if it's at that attack range. So, <laughs> we've act I think we've actually seen some from Painter decks without Grom though. Yeah, well, it's actually it's one of the decks that I find the weirdest. Like, I know Dog was playing a um, a Patron deck without a second Fiery War Axe. I think I'm not too sure. I just know there's uh, there's like a 700 dust version of the Grim Patron deck that like yeah. people like playing these days. Let's so go 700 dust. Yeah, I have I have that. Yeah, let's play number yeah. one ranked deck. Let's do Didn't it. Didn't you know Crip pay to win, man? Hearthstone is pay to win. Yeah, it's dude. Like, it's all about the RNG. It's not the dust count that's holding me back. Uh, ooh, look at that. Big game that is actually a really good card to play against Life Coach. If you know he's going to be bringing Handlock to counter your patron, that's mm -hmm. pretty much on spot. That's a little bit like old tech, but uh, mm -hmm. still very strong stuff. Yeah, I have to wonder if he's playing one or two Fiery War Axes against Life Coach, because usually you won't need the second one against someone like Life Coach who plays uh, slower decks. Well, right now, um, the Grim Patron combo is like pretty real, actually. Mm -hmm. This is actually one of the things I, I like about uh, Lotheb. A lot of people say Lotheb is not good against Patron, but I found it to be the very opposite. Mm -hmm. I think it's much easier to you know get yourself to 10 mana when, when you have a Lotheb, even against Patron. Just gain one extra turn. Yeah, just to get to that last turn where you can very often as handlock, you know, weave in uh, a bit more taunting options. Yeah, I think the the sad part is uh, the best play this turn involves a mountain giant. He still hasn't seen a single execute. Hmm. Yeah, but like he, I mean, he how, needed how an activator on it, and he's played a lot of activators already. So like, I don't think it'd even be that sad if it did get executed. Like, is Sylvanas just terrible? Yeah, Sylvanas is fine. Because, I mean, if you still have Patron, it has charge, right? So. Alright, he's just probably gonna go for the Lotha play. Yeah. Okay. It's... Well, that works out. I think the Cypher was uh, planning for a turn 9 combo for just draw. So, I don't think that really affects him in any way. Draw his entire deck. Yeah, actually, that I believe that's exactly it. Play like 6 Grim Patrons and draw your deck. That's a pretty good play, isn't it? It's also very balanced. Yep. So do you ever uh, inner rage Lotha and BGH? It? <laughs> it's like no, not against the most irrelevant play. Yeah, of course. I'm just kind of trying to figure it out. Like, what does Cipher do? Is that going to be a boring armor pass like every patient play ever made? No, I think uh, the two two and the axe kills the watcher here. So he's just going to battle rage for one card and keep the second one for the turn nine. Seems like it. Wow. <laughs> one ma one card sprint. <laughs> Sounds like value. Yeah, I mean, he, it really goes to show just how good Lothab is. You're right about that. Get that slam jam. Slam jam? Yeah. This is the yeah. moment where I wish people were playing Arcan Golem OTK. Yeah, that's a little bit a thing of the past, but I, I certainly like that type of uh, that type of play. So here, if you're life coach, um, what do you do? You have a three mana mountain giant like that. That just has to be good enough one of these turns. Uh, the question is, is it this turn? You can play well, the giant does. and the belcher. Yeah, I like that. I mean, he might be thinking of using healbot, but that's not going to prevent a frothing berserker from just wrecking him anyway. Yeah. So maybe you want to go mountain giant. And then, do you taunt it up? Uh, no. But Sun Fury, or do you use that when you can molten it? I think if um, if there is removal in the warrior's hand, he's going to have to use it on just the naked uh, mountain giant. Oh, just giant because he's at 19 health. Like, you just threaten to kill him. I mean, he's going to have to play the mountain. The question is whether or not... Because Belcher, the, the big problem with Belcher is the fact that it's actually going to give the slime to your opponent, which again fuels the frothing and fuels the patrons, depending mm -hmm. on what your opponent got off of the uh, the Emperor Thorson. And that's a pretty nice draw for Cypher. Is it? Um, his combo is still 9 mana, 
like just to draw. So I feel that's like a turn off. I feel like in this spot you'd consider um, maybe just cycling the slam on the low feb and BGHing the eight eight. I mean, BGH is definitely coming out right now. Like, there's no question about that. The thing is, do you want frothing or do you want patrons? Because again, patrons, it's a pretty cute board, but it, it just dies to a hellfire. So slam for the cycle makes sense. You're putting one of the two possible minions, probably Lothab, into roll and range if you play that next turn. Yeah. Even if it gets taunted up with defender, the uh, the ghoul plus the whirlwind will kill it. That's not bad. Yeah, I just play that. Whatever. Yeah, you know, card draw. I don't think it's worth the execute. With execute, you can you can literally kill any one card off the board next turn because you have that one extra mana. So he does get his defender though. So like that's good. He's got the Sun Fury and he's got the defender. Ragnaros again is a bit of a problem for uh, warrior players very often. Maybe nah, that's the reason Cipher includes it. Here. Um, no, no, it's just that like if Life Coach lives and can dodge the frothing from his perspective. He's got enough taunters to exhaust the executes from Cypher, mm -hmm. which is what you're looking to do. I guess you have to trade Lothab away. Yeah, I think this is a tougher turn than the last the one. Yeah. I mean, do you ever just silence the Acolyte, trade into it with the bot, sacrifice Lothab to the BGH, then play a Belcher? Well, just a yeah, well, like Belcher. how how good is the silence going to be from this point on? I think denying one card is... Uh, Pretty reasonable here. It's almost as good as you're gonna get for that. Uh... Yep. Belcher up. Come on, life coach. Increase that APM. Oh wow, yep. he's actually gonna taunt stuff. I didn't see that coming. No, I didn't. I either. did not see that coming. Is he trying to push for the opponent's. Wait, what? Whoa, what? Okay, I think we just uh just witnessed a misplay. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh oh, life coach. I don't even like that because the defensive Argus just gives another uh, Grim Patron. It does nothing. I'm not sure I like that play. I guess Belcher also did, but. Uh, that would be a premature whirlwind, wouldn't it? I mean, I'm a little surprised by life coach's line of play there. Life coach witnessing firsthand the balance. All right, so the frothing is getting picked up. He still needs to find a second war song. All right, he's got to be afraid of Hellfire, so he doesn't expect this board to live very often. And now the question is, does he just go face as much as he can? I mean, I have to assume yep. he's going to trade away the ghoul into. Uh, That's exactly into it. Two. I think he just no, nailed he... it. I think he just Man. go face as much as you can. 18 damage from patrons. That is very unusual. Very often you'll pick up like you know a, a nine damage here if everything lines up, but mm -hmm. eighteen. I mean, come on, that's just crazy talk. Yep. And uh, did crap. he actually get it all off there? He yeah. did. Okay. The master of APM. Yeah, and people people say uh, Hearthstone's not a technical. Uh, yeah, dude, look at this. Technical skills esports, <laughs> you know. Yeah, you're laughing at this, but come on, I dare the, you. The APM do that. on that turn was pretty good. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, we saw Orange just lose a game because of the APM, or maybe because of Belcher, but, you know. All right, so that's probably going to have to be a Molten turn. Like, oh, man. Mm. So if you Hellfire, you're on three health. So whatever you taunt up, you better hope it lives. I mean, what's... Are you, like, is there a don't Hellfire play? I, I don't see that. So. I mean, Molten, Healbot... Sun Fury, Coil the Warsong Commander. I would just like Coil it to begin with. Okay. Cycle Coil. Well, you better start moving, because last, <laughs> last turn didn't work out so well. I didn't, like, his APM last turn wasn't quite uh, where he wanted it to be, I don't think. Uh, I don't think that's quite the card he wants to play. And now he knows that, like, I mean, Cypher knows there's no way he's going to lose this. Actually, does he just win? Warsong Commander with double frothing, inner rage on the frothing. Inner rage is that even one enough? Three it's one at three, one, one at five. five. No. 
So he actually doesn't have lethal, does he? Yeah. Actually, wait, patron. Yeah, patron with war song is still just eight damage as well. The most wait, the most damage you could do is death spite face commander and frothing. Yeah, and it's not going to be nine. enough anyway. That's, That's nine. nine. He's really close. Okay. Wow. Well, life coach. Uh, he's he's hanging in there. But yeah, he is yeah. hanging in there. There's two executes. Like, what if Cypher just goes face with Death's Bite and keeps the execute for the taunters, whatever's taunted up? Is there a way to stop him with the AoE next turn and the Inner Rage? Like, I don't yeah, think he's, Cypher. He's gonna need a lot of taunts here. Uh, wait, is Ragnaros lethal? Oh, it is. Oh, You're wow. Right. <laughs> Who missed that? Life Coach picking up the game here. That is, is really lethal. good for him. Yeah, he must have been so scared. And he, <laughs> <laughs> look he at just reaction. realized it. Like, Whoa! What? This is the dream. My Ragnaros is gonna take the game, and Cypher's gonna lose with Patron against Life Coach. The one card to rule them all here for Life Coach. He must be relieved at that. That was like the worst possible turn that Cypher yeah. could hope for to seal the game. Oh man. Yeah, Cypher was was just short, and uh, man. Oh man. That was that was really exciting. Uh, much. I mean, we we, we kind of didn't see it because. We were just so focused on like the Cypher's how life option. coach was gonna lose. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. how is life coach gonna lose this game? All right, never mind. There's a we, we saw it. He, he was even like blown away. And uh, man, life coach puts a point on the board. Uh, Cipher zero two in the group with uh, with top three advancing. It seems like uh, life coach's uh, chances. Chances just skyrocketed off of yeah, that. Win. And to be honest, because Surrender and Life Coach might end up in the top three, then it means that even if Cypher wins his next two matches, the cutoff might prevent him from getting through because he's going to be yeah. uh, having lost the top two players, depending on how things go. But okay. Life Coach taking the series here against Cypher has got to feel pretty happy after what happened this, uh, with Surrender last time. Uh, pretty insane series of games. Man, that was good. Yeah, Those was, were like really good games. Those were really good games. Really good games. All right, guys, so we'll be going for a short break and we'll come back with Harudra versus Hawkeye. Again, we were supposed to cast Kalento versus Stilo, but the match will be rescheduled. Before we go, a quick shout out to our sponsors, Vulcan, for organizing this. Obviously, you can check them out at Vulcan.com and Squarespace. Now, Squarespace is a place you can go to build your own website. They've got very intuitive tools, super easy to do, looks professional, clean, and uh, most importantly, it's not very expensive. So if you want to get yourself a website, head on there, squarespace.com slash deckmasters, and you can get yourself that website. So on this note, we'll be back after a short break. Don't go anywhere.